screen, you're still trying to figure out stuff, and I didn't give you a calculator, which you're probably hoping you're, you're probably hoping that you got one. Um, I picked some easy numbers. I didn't want to. I didn't want to spoil it with the calculator because calculator makes it a little too easy. Here's the idea: the number thirty. One and thirty, two and fifteen, three and ten, five and six. Probably, I saw that for the most part. I think a couple people didn't give me all of them. They kind of stopped. Um, all right, so in there, Google. So that happened. I'm hoping the power goes up. Oh, dude, I'm not going to hate to this. Okay. All right. Well, back to this anyway. All right. So. For the most part, I saw most people had all the right numbers. I had one goofy answer on this one, where it was 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6, and then somebody also put 5 and 10. Even though they had all these listed, all these pairs, then they suddenly appeared 5 and 10, which I thought was kind of weird. Like, you already had a 5 and a 6 and a 3 and a 10. That, that was kind of weird. Anyway, uh, next number, the number 12. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. I think most people got those if you actually attempted to simplify them. 20 was 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. And then 34, the most common mistake, people didn't realize 2 went into it. It ended with an even number. 2 had to go into it. Uh, so it was 2 and 17. It wasn't prime. A lot of people kept putting prime. 2 went into it. All right, the next ones. You had to figure out, uh, let me scroll up here. All right, you had to figure out the the greatest common factor between 28 and 35, it was the number 7. 28 had 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 4 and 7. 35 had 1, 35, 5 and 7. Well, they both had 7. So that was your greatest common factor. Uh, the bottom numbers here, you had to figure out which number is bigger, which number is greater. Um, let's see. All right. There we go. Uh, so 0 and 5, obviously 5 is a larger number, so the, the mouth has to face 5. Uh, negative 80 is technically a larger number than negative 120, where it sits on a number line. Like negative 80 is over here, negative 120 is to the left further, that is a smaller number. Um, it's very weird to think about, but negative 80 is a larger number. Um, on these, they are equal, and some people like try to put the inequality symbol, they're exactly the same number. Uh, they both be 7s. And then on this one, um, this is a positive 10, that's a positive 9. A positive 10 would be a bigger number, because it's absolute value, they just can't spell the negative signs. Questions on the first page. I believe it was out of 22. Um, now, how it worked up here at the very top, I believe that I put that problem is out of 3 if you've even attempted it. Um, these, it was basically um, every pair was 1 point. So this problem is worth 4, this problem is worth 3. You can see by scoring this is worth 2, and this is worth 3. That's how it worked. Okay? All right, uh, next page. Uh, you had to fill the gaps on your number line. So on this particular problem, uh, the gap was from 0, blank, 12. It was going by 6. 0, 6, 12, 18. On the other side, negative 6. I think I had one personal crap negative sign, but they were doing all the numbers correct. Uh, next one, 5.4 is a rational number. It's a decimal. Uh, the number 4 is a natural number, so it would be a whole integer and a rational number. Uh, this number didn't end, so it is irrational. It had the dot, a dot. I think I even said that out loud before I even started the quiz. Like pi, it has a dot to dot, so you know it doesn't end. Uh, so it's irrational. And then the bottom number is a negative number, so it's automatically an integer, automatically, because it's a negative, uh, because it doesn't have a decimal. Um, so it's an integer, but then it also would have to be irrational, because you can make it French. Uh, so I believe this page is out of 13, I think? It's 11. 11. Okay, there you go. They're yours to keep. You cannot make fixes on them. So this one, you just can keep hold on to it. I would strongly recommend hold on to that. The reason being is if you want something to study for for the next test we have coming up, probably in less than a maybe two weeks period, um, this is a great start because these are probably, no joke, your first few questions on that next test we have. So they might even be the exact same questions. Let's do it in the next week. All right. Okay. Moving on here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. All right. So if you have your notes out, uh, if you don't, take them out right now. I'll hand back some papers tomorrow. Uh, the worksheets you guys turned in on Friday last week, um, I'll hand those out probably tomorrow. Today we're going to take a few notes. We're not getting homework or anything like that today. We're just taking a few notes. 
I strongly recommend you take notes. This is kind of our first topic, major, major bullet topic um, after this checkpoint that we need to cover. Like if I'm thinking about like major bullets, today is one of those major topics that you're going to probably have a lot of questions on our next test on. Just because it's, it's pretty straightforward. You will not need a calculator today for this stuff. Because the whole point is to, to learn the basics today. It's not to go overboard and do super difficult problems. So we're on the fourth section of this first chapter, the prerequisite chapter. We're adding numbers together. Add. That's it. Add. Easiest thing in the world. So my goal is to go through about three slides-ish kind of thing. I think it's three or four slides, and then we're done today. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, let me kind of walk through what we have here. So, I just kind of jumped right in, I just kind of brought up kind of the main topic here. All right, well, what is up with this projector? It is messing up everything. Sorry. All right, so here's the idea. We want to add numbers together without calculators. This is our main bullet, right? So the trick is to add numbers, uh, we have a bunch of different methods. Number one, you could just Help with your fingers, like no joke, a lot of people do that. I'm totally fine with that. That's a skill. It's literally using visual lights. That's great. The second way of doing it to add integers is um, is a column method. So I'm going to put that on the board here. This is something I like you to write down. A column method is the preferred choice for doing things really quickly. Some people can get so good at a column that they can do it in their head. They can phys they can actually like see it in their head when they're actually doing numbers. So how you do the column method? You put the two numbers down, and you line them up in the back. Because you have to imagine that there is decimals. You have to line up the decimals behind the numbers. You don't need to have every space accounted for, uh, but the back, the back numbers have to be lined up. So if there is decimals and numbers past that, you have to add those. OK, when you add in column method, you're starting on the right side. This is where you're going to start. And you're going to work your way to the left. And you're going to add the columns straight down. So this is where it, the, the, the idea behind adding is that it's keeping your numbers super small. Like the biggest number you can have is a two digit number that's probably less than 20. Like that's just how it works. So it's, it's keeping the numbers as small as possible so that you don't have to overthink the problem. Now, obviously, strategies that you probably want to use in this case, estimation, like estimate what your answer would be in the beginning. I was looking at four and eight, 14 and 18, I think about 20 inch, just because of the numbers. That's just ballparking, okay? Um, but then the idea is that actually adding the numbers straight down and then carrying. So the big thing is you do have to carry any extras. So you're going to carry a second digit if necessary. I'll explain that concept here in a minute. These are like the basic overviews of what we need to cover. Okay, so let's do this example. We'll carry it on to these next problems. Like I picked an easy problem just so you could you could see it. Um, most people probably did it in their head. Uh, but four and eight. When you add them together, what do you get? 12, okay, you get 12. Four and eight makes 12, right? So here's the idea. Since what, what you do is you get a two digit number. When you get 12, you're gonna put the two here, right, for 12, one and two. But you don't write down the one. What you do is you carry it to the next column. So since this is a 12, you're gonna put a 12, the one for the 12 up above. And you're gonna basically add straight down. That's the idea. That's why, that's how you carry a second digit. That's how uh, it works for multiplying as well. The same idea, the second digit carries over. All right, but anyways, you're adding straight down, you get 12, you're going to carry the one, and now what you're doing is you're adding this column straight down. So you're adding the one, one, and zero. What's one plus one? Two. 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 Boom, there's your answer. Like, it's the easiest thing in the world. Once you see it, you're like, okay, makes sense. And you just keep going until you run out of numbers. If there's any blanks or the numbers don't match up, you can always put a zero there, it's called a filler. So that's, that's, that's the concept of adding numbers, right? Um, they, they teach column method probably as early as second, third grade, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, it's the go-to. I still use it. Um, one of those weird things, I can't even add or subtract in my head. I honestly cannot do it. Like, 
real basic numbers, I have to write it down and talk about it. I can multiply and divide and do crazy type of mathematics in my head, but I can't add and subtract. It's like a weird block with me. But this is this is the idea. This is my go-to. It's my go-to version when I have to do it on paper. Questions with the column method. Now I said there's other methods, right? There is other methods that you could, instead of doing a column method, you could do a visual aid other than fingers. You could do a number line. Where you could add on a number line itself. That's something we're going to look at tomorrow. Um, you could count with chips, where you actually have like a physical token instead of fingers. You have actual physical things in front of you. Um, just little things like that. Like um, you could break up numbers. If you had a bunch of things you had to add, you could like group them together. That's another strategy where you just like group numbers you know you can add together. Um, but this is, I'd say, this is by far the easiest method. Questions on the idea of what we're doing today? My goal is to focus on this topic, this style. Today, tomorrow, I'll give you some other options. You know, with number lines and other physical tokens and other things. Okay, we're good though. It is boring. All right. Okay. Let's move on. Let's go to the next topic. All right. Okay. Next one. Here's what I like you to do. I uh, know it looks like the same slide. I want you to try to add these numbers on your paper right now. I'm going to walk around. I want to see if you get. So you're doing 23 and 34. Sorry if it didn't show up that well, but there you go. I want you to try to add these. I want to see how well you paid attention. I want to see what you have on your paper. Write it really big. Keep it in your notes. You're not going to tear it out or anything like that. Just keep it in your notes. This will be kind of your first option for practicing this. And then we're going to get to our next topic. Method. I don't care which number goes on the top, it really doesn't matter in column method. That's the beauty of it. You have to start on the right side, that's a seven, you add the two and three, you make five, boom, you're done. Everyone got the same answer. We're good, we move on. Right? <coughs> Super easy. Now, here's the reason why I bring it up. Some people just need that refresher. They need to see it one more time, okay, what's the correct method of doing it? Most people are gonna do it in their hand, uh, in their head faster than I can. But you guys get the idea. Now the reason why you bring this up, okay, we can add a bunch of different numbers together. So on and so forth. But here's why I bring it up. This is our topic today. Negative numbers, right? Integers. Do you agree that both of these numbers are negative? Yeah. yeah. You can do it the same way. With negative numbers. It's one of those things that they teach in like third, fourth, fifth grade that people forget. If both numbers are negative, yeah, they just they're it's like a positive number. You just add them together the same way. But here's the crazy part. The answer will still be negative. Two negatives don't cancel out unless you're multiplying or dividing. That's a common misconception. So the idea is that when you're adding 20 and 4, if they're the same symbol, you add them like normal. So this is going to add up to be 24, but you keep the negative sign on. Here's why. It's like a label, right? What's the best way I can explain it? Um, if you had candy bars, right? So you had so many Snicker candy bars. One person had 20, the other person had four, and you're adding them together, you still have 24 Snickers total. All right, the label didn't suddenly change to a different type of candy bar. Question. Can I go to the restroom? Yes, you know. Let me give you a pass. Okay. All right, 
questions on the basics on a two double negative type of number. They're both they're both added together and they're both negatives, so it makes a bigger uh, makes a bigger number. But the answer is still negative. That's the, that's the concept. Okay, it's still a column method. Now let me get to another example here. Okay, because they're both negative. You're adding them together. Okay, same idea. Both these numbers are negative. You'll add them together. These are both negatives. You add them together. Both negatives you add together. You'd still do column method. You don't need to write any of those down. We'll get to those later. Do you agree that all those numbers are negatives? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next number. These are not. One of them's negative, one of them's positive. Now we're not in the adding realm anymore. The reason why, there are two different labels. One's negative, one's positive. Yeah, you have to subtract these numbers from each other. Here's the idea. This is my visual aid to help you with this, this idea of this, this token idea. You have seven negatives, five positives. So it was supposed to be like gray and black. Sorry, I didn't really show that well. But you guys get the idea. What you do is, if you have two numbers that are opposites, like one's positive and one's negative, what you do is you cancel out these numbers because they would, they would um, opposites um, basically attract. They would cancel each other out. So these are gone. These represent negative numbers. These represent positive numbers. So what? how many numbers are left over in the end? Two negatives, right? That's a visual aid that you can just see. Some people like that. They like the idea of a token. Now, obviously, this doesn't make sense if you're doing bigger numbers, right? I don't want to draw stupid tokens all the way across my paper. It doesn't make any sense. So we have to learn like those shortcuts. How do you recognize the type of number that you're doing? So if I was doing this problem and you recognize that they're different, I would just subtract them any way you want. I don't care the order you subtract. I would just put the bigger number on the top. That's just how I do it. But then you just figure out which, what the answer is going to be in the long run. Whatever number is larger, in terms of absolute value, that's the symbol you're going to have. So if I look at this, this number is negative 7. This number is 5. When you look at the absolute value of them, obviously 7 is technically a larger number in absolute value. That's the symbol you're going to keep. Whatever number is bigger. So if the bigger number was a positive number, like this one, <coughs> the 10, since that's a bigger number technically, when you do absolute values of 10 versus negative 6, your answer will be positive because you're comparing which number is bigger. But since these are different, you just subtract them. 10, and you're going to take away 6, which is, what, 4? And the answer is going to be positive in the long run because the bigger number was positive anyway. Or if you want to do the token idea, right? You have 10 tokens. Oh, uh, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Those are all positive. You have 6 negatives. Negatives, there you go. You cancel out one for one, and then you can see what you have left over. You have four positives left over. All right, questions at all about the concepts that we're doing today? Okay, I have one last question. I want to see how well you can do. This is my last question of the day. If we get it right, we're done for the day. Okay. Pretty easy. Here we go. I want you to do the top one. Easiest thing in the world. But here's the thing I want you to draw it. I want you to do this. I want you to show this type of work, not column method. I want you to draw tokens and tell me what the answer is going to be in the long run. I'm done. Okay. I want to see it on your paper. If you get it right, we're done for the day. If, if one person gets it wrong, and I won't say who did, we'll go to the next one. We're going to try the next one until we get it right. Yeah. We're going to the top one. So we're doing the top one. The nine and the negative three. And I want to see it drawn with tokens, the round dots, and you're canceling them when they match up. And you're telling me what the final answer is going to be in the long run. So what I was doing on this one, this was a positive 10, this was a negative 6. You're telling me what you get when you have these two Yes. Okay.
least for the most part, we got it. So, here's the idea. Right? Last, this is my last one, no joke. Nine positives. There we go. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You had three negatives. Here's my negatives. They would cancel each other out. That's how the opposites work. And what's your final answer in the long run? Six. six. There's six positives left over. Okay, we're done. Pretty, pretty nice and pretty easy. Okay, relax. You can kind of work kind of wherever you need to. I thought it'd be kind of a nice day. I've been doing a lot of work recently. It'd be a nice day to relax, get caught up on things.